Hello everyone, my name is Raphael and welcome to Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, I wanna show you a useful feature for Cisco IOS and IOS XE called the Embedded Packet Capture. We all know that packet captures are really helpful, right? We want that packet level visibility to not just troubleshoot and prove it's not the network, but to really learn how the different protocols work. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I love configuring technologies for you guys and showing you what they look like in a packet capture using Wireshark. Now with the embedded packet capture feature for Cisco IOS and iOS XE, the router is gonna collect or capture packets that are sent and received on an interface. Once you configure it and you capture the data you want, you can go ahead and export it as a PCAP file to a TFTP server or or just install a free TFTP program on your laptop and send it there and open it with Wireshark. Now, something to keep in mind is that the packets that you capture are actually stored in a buffer on the router in DRAM. That does mean that if the router reboots, the packet captures are gone. Now with this feature, you can capture everything or get pretty granular. That's right, you can capture all packets that enter or leave a particular interface or even in both directions, which is basically everything. But in some cases, that might be too much data. So if you only wanted to see maybe OSPF packets going across a link, you can do that too by configuring the capture with an ACL. I'll show you how to do both, so don't worry. All right, enough of me talking about how cool it is. Let's get it configured. All right, so we're finally ready for the configuration portion of the video. And if you look at the upper right hand corner, we have a very simple, simple topology. So we have router one and router two connected over gig 1.100. That's a sub interface. And we have a TFTP server on the left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure router one for an embedded packet capture. And we're gonna capture everything inbound and outbound on that gig 1.100 interface. Once we have our capture, we're gonna go ahead and export it to the TFTP server and look at it in Wireshark. So let's get started. So when you're working with the embedded packet capture feature, this is not something that you're going to go to config T and then configure, right? You're going to do this straight from privilege exec mode. So let's get started. So you're going to do monitor capture and let's give it a name. We're going to say test and you're going to specify an interface, right? What's our capture point? What, what, what interface do we want to capture on? And we're going to say gig 1.100. And if you hit question mark, you have some options here. You have both, which is gonna capture inbound and outbound packets. You have in, so if you only wanted to capture inbound packets on the interface, you'd say in. And the same thing with out, is to only capture outbound packets. Now, when you're working with this feature, you can configure this packet capture on sub interfaces, physical interfaces, or tunnel interfaces. So we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna capture both directions on interface gig 1.100. So now we told it what interface to capture on, we need to tell it what to capture. So in our case, we wanna capture everything. So we're gonna say monitor, capture, test, match, anything. Now that's gonna capture IPv4, IPv6, whatever. So now that we have said what interface we wanna capture, what type of traffic do we wanna capture, we need to start the capture. So we're gonna say monitor, capture, and put the name, which is test, and we're gonna say start. Great, the capture has been started. So let me show you the show command really quick. We're gonna do show monitor capture and then put the name test. So you can see that the capture, right, which is named test, we are capturing on interface gig 1.100 and we are capturing in both directions. You can also see that the status of the capture is active. So if you forgot to start the capture up here, you would see inactive here on the status. And then our filter details, we are capturing all packets. And then if you look down here in the buffer details, right, we have linear, and this is what this is telling us that it's the default. Now with the buffer type, you have two options. You have linear and circular. Linear means that when the capture buffer is full, it's gonna stop capturing data, that's it. And you can see that the buffer size is 10 megabytes. When the buffer size hits 10 megabytes, it's gonna stop. If you were to change this to circular, when the capture buffer is full, it's gonna continue capturing data and it's just gonna overwrite the old stuff. So it's gonna keep going. All right, so now that we have our capture configured, let's go ahead and generate some traffic, right? Let's ping the other side on router two, that gig 1.100 on the other side. So I'm gonna go ping 10. Oops, 10.1.1.101. Great, I have reachability, so I should have some pings uh, in my capture. Let's configure OSPF on that link. So config T, interface gig.1.100, IP OSPF1, area zero. And let's also do EIGRP. So router, oops, router EIGRP1, network 10.1.1.0 with a wildcard of 255. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Interface gig 1.100, IP OSPF 1, 
area zero, router EIGRP one. Let's put our network statement 10.1.1. Oops, dot zero, 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 two, five, five. So let's give it a couple seconds for these adjacencies to come up. So you can see EIGRP is pretty quick. EIGRP is already up. Let's wait for OSPF. All right, perfect. So you can see here our OSPF adjacency is up. We are full and the loading is done. So we've done some pings. We've configured EIGRP. Those neighbors came up. We configured OSPF and those neighbors come up. So we should have some, some, some traffic in our filter. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I want to show you this command. Show monitor. Oops. Show monitor. Capture. Test. Buffer. You can see here that there's 97 packets in the buffer. And if you want to see a, a brief detail on what's inside the buffer, you can say show buffer brief. So you can see here we have uh, timestamps and we have source and destination and we have the protocol. So you can see that inside of this buffer that we configured, we have ICMP, which is our pings, and we have some OSPF and EHRP packets as well. So we know our capture is working. Let's go ahead and export it to our Wireshark machine and look at the capture. So to export this capture, what you're going to do is you're going to say monitor capture and you're going to put the name test export TFTP and you're going to put the IP of the TFTP server or whatever PC or laptop you have running a TFTP program. So for my example, it's 192.168.1.70. And then you're going to give the capture a name, right? So you're going to say whatever you want. I'm just going to put router one, router two, any, and then put dot pcap. Awesome. So you can see that the capture has been exported successfully. Let me go ahead and open it up and show you guys. All right. So you can see here that on that gig 1.100 interface, we've received everything, right? We received the pings. Here's our ICMPs and we have our OSPF and EIGRP. These are our hellos. And then once each side saw each other's hello, they started going through that negotiation process and becoming neighbors in, in the adjacency. So you're going to see all those packets here, OSPF and EIGRP. So that's really cool. But there's some cases where the interface that you want to capture on might be a very, very busy interface, and this might be too much information. So what we're going to do next is we're going to configure the capture on router one to not say capture anything. We're going to tell it only send me OSPF packets. So we're not going to see pings. We're not going to see EIGRP. We're only going to see OSPF packets. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to stop the capture. So I'm going to say monitor, capture, test, stop, right? I'm stopping the capture and I'm going to clear the capture. So I'm going to say monitor, capture, test, clear. All the capture data is gone and we can verify this by doing show monitor, capture, Put name, buffer, zero. Packets in buffer are zero. So the capture's off and it's empty. Let's go ahead and configure an access list to only match on OSPF traffic. So I'm going to create an extended access list. So I'm going to say IP access list extended and I'll just name it whatever only OSPF. And we're going to permit OSPF any, any. All right. Now that that ACL has been configured, we're going to say monitor capture and we're going to put our, our name test. And let me show you a question mark really quick. So you can have the, you can put the name of the capture or you can specify an ACL and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to say access list and the name of our access list was only dash OSPF. And we're going to say interface gig 1.100. So we're going to capture our interface gig 1.100, but it's only going to be traffic that's referenced in this access list, which is OSPF packets. Oops, both. All right, so a filter is already attached to the capture, replaced with the new access list. Yes, we want to do that. Now let's go ahead and start the capture. Monitor capture, test, start. All right, so let's go ahead and get some pings. 10.1.1, let's ping the other side on router two. All right, so we have our pings and let's give it a few seconds for OSPF and EHRP hellos to go across the link. All right, we should have a little bit of uh, protocol messages going across. So let's go ahead and export our capture. So we're gonna say monitor capture test export TFTP slash slash put the IP 192.168.1.70 and we're gonna give it a name. Let's just say 
uh, r1 ospf dot pcap. All right, so you can see our capture has been exported successfully. You always want to see this. Let me go ahead and open it up. All right, look at that. We had pings going across, we have EIGRP packets going across, and we have OSPF. By combining the access list with our, our capture, right, we are able to only capture what we want, only what we're interested in. And this is going to really help you get organized with your, with your captures and make sure that you're only seeing the data that you want to see. And if you open it up, you can see all the cool uh, details, all the little hello packet parameters that need to match and things like that. So awesome. So let's say that you're done with your capture. You don't need to, you don't need any more information. So what you can do is you can say monitor capture, put the name, let's stop it, and then just delete it. No monitor capture, test. All right, so we covered how to set up an embedded packet capture in Cisco IOS XE. We did some show commands to verify some of the details on our capture. I then exported two captures, one matching all traffic in and out of an interface. And then I got specific and I said, you know what? Only show me OSPF packets exiting and entering that same interface. Lastly, we took a quick peek at the captures in Wireshark to verify our work. I really hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. And you can also follow me on my Facebook page, Network Engineer Pro. All links and the config I use on router one to get this capture set up is in the description of the video. So don't forget to take a look, especially if you want to test it out in your own lab and get familiar with how it works. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and post a link to the Cisco configuration guide for this feature. I really recommend taking a look here because this is where you're going to see not just how to configure it, but if there's any kind of limitations or maybe image requirements to be able to do this, you're going to find it there. And with that being said, if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks everyone and have a great day.